Okay, welcome to Lecture Online, and here we have the challenge of actually calculating the magnitude of the velocity of a particle on the very edge of the tire, the very edge of the solid, rigid body that's rotating. And so what we need to do here is see if we can come up with an equation that will always describe the velocity, the magnitude of that velocity. And of course, in order to find the magnitude, we have to find the individual components of the velocity, so there always will be an x and a y component if we consider this to be in the xy plane. So, looking at the first example right here, where we have uh, a particle on the tire right here at a 45 degree angle above the horizontal, so this angle here, 45 degrees. So, at that point, we know that we're going to have a translational velocity in the x direction, the velocity of the, let's say, the car that's driving to the right. And then we have the tangential velocity of a particle on the edge of the tire, as the tire is rotating like this. So, let me show you that definitely the tire is rotating like this. So that would be omega, so that the car is moving forward in this direction. And you can see that this would then be the tangential component, which has an x and a y component to the tangential velocity. And you can then clearly see that the net uh, horizontal velocity would be the velocity translational v sub x plus the x component of the tangential velocity. And now, what is the magnitude of that tangential velocity in the x direction? So if this is the angle theta 1 right here, then this is the angle theta sub 1. And I forgot the sub 1 here. Might as well put it on there. There we go. And so these two angles are the same. Now, how do you know that those two angles are the same? Well, notice that as this angle becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, then the tangential velocity will be more and more like this. And you can see that this angle will become smaller and smaller and smaller as well. And so you can see that these angles are indeed the same angle right there. Notice as this angle becomes bigger, it goes up to 90 degrees, then this tangential velocity will come up here, and you can see that this angle also will become 90 degrees. So that should at least explain to you, or at least make you comfortable, that those are the same two angles. If those are the same two angles, then notice that the x component right here is the same as this component right here, which would be opposite to the angle theta sub 1. So therefore, v tangential in the x direction is equal to v tangential times the sine of the angle theta. That seems a little odd because typically when you think about the x component of a velocity, you like to use the cosine, but in this case it will not be the case. It will be the sine of the angle. And then to find the y component here of the tangential velocity, notice that the y component is adjacent to the angle, so therefore it's v tangential times the cosine of the angle theta sub 1. Also notice that this component is downwards, should be a negative direction. So then if we find the total velocity, at this location right there, and maybe I want to call it total velocity 1 at point 1 right here. And so that would be the velocity in the x direction because of translational motion plus the tangential component, which is right here, also in the x direction. And minus the, the uh, vertical component or the y component of the tangential velocity right here. And that will give you the total velocity in vector format of the velocity at this point on the tire. Now, of course, if you want to find the magnitude, then you could say that uh, v, um, the magnitude of the velocity total is simply equal to the square root of the v total in the x direction squared plus v total in the y direction squared. And so that will give you the magnitude of the velocity along the rim at that particular location. Now, does that same equation hold for, let's say, this point right here? So let's say now my angle is theta sub 2, and let's say theta sub 2 is equal to, uh, with a right area, 135 degrees. So it's 45 degrees past the vertical. Does that same equation hold? And the way to see that is let's go ahead and write the same equation down, but let's write the angle down. I think at that point we can see that it, it should actually work. So this is equal, and let me use a different color. So this would be equal to v in the x direction, so v in the x direction times the unit vector in the x direction, so that's the translational component, and then plus v sub t, the tangential component. Of course, the magnitude of the tangential component is always going to be equal to the magnitude of the translational velocity times the sine of 135 degrees. So times the sine of 135 degrees minus v sub t times the cosine of 135 degrees. And of course, I can't forget my x component here, so my x unit vector minus, 
and my y unit vector. All right, because it's in vector format. Now, let's see if that works. Notice here that because it's a 45 degree angle, that these will be equal to each other in magnitude. But notice that this is in a positive x direction. So, is the sine of 135 the same as the sine of 45? And the answer is yes, it is, right? The sine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2, and the sine of 135 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. Now, is this a positive value? And the answer is yes, because the sine of 135 is the same as the sine of 45. It's both a positive value. And the positive value shows right here that, yes, it's pointing in the positive x direction. So it looks like v sub t in the x direction is indeed correct. So the tangential velocity component in the x direction can be also written as a sine of 135 degrees. How about the component in the y direction? Well, here we have the cosine of 135 degrees. Now, the cosine of 135 degrees is on the, that's the second quadrant, and the cosine in the second quadrant is negative. So this would be the negative value of the cosine of 45 degrees. But you can see here that the component should be in the positive direction, but the negative sign in front of that will negate the negative from the cosine of 135 degrees, making that positive. And I know that's a small negative sign, so make it a little bit bigger. So you can see that this negative sign will negate that the fact that the cosine of 135 is negative, and yes, it will give you that positive value. So that seems to work okay. How about this third point? Will it also work for the third point? Well, let's see here. This is equal to v in the x direction times the x unit vector plus v tangential times the sine of, in this case, the angle will be 225 degrees, so times the sine of 225 degrees in the x direction minus v tangential times the cosine of 225 degrees in the y direction. Now, notice that uh, v tangential in the x direction is now in the negative direction. Do we get that when we plug this in right here? Well, notice that the sine of 225 degrees is now in the third quadrant, and the sine in the third quadrant is going to be a negative value, all right? And the, the magnitude of the sine of 225 degrees should be the same as the magnitude of the sine of 45 degrees, because it's directly across the, the um, circle like that. So it'll be the square root of 2 over 2, but it'll be a negative value because it's in the third quadrant. And notice that v tangential in the x direction is indeed pointing in the negative direction. So at least direction-wise and magnitude-wise, this gives us the correct value. How about the y component right here? Well, we have the v tangential times the cosine of 225 degrees. Now, the cosine of 225 degrees, that's in the third quadrant. Oh, that will be a negative value because it's in the third quadrant. It's to the left of the y-axis, so to speak. So, negative value. But I see a positive component right here. But again, this negative sign will cancel out the negative I get from the cosine of 225 degrees, which gives me a positive quantity matching, again, the direction of that vector. The magnitude, the cosine of 225 degrees, is the same in magnitude as the cosine of 45 degrees. So therefore, magnitude twice the same, sine is the same. Yes, it works. This, indeed, is the equation that describes the velocity in vector format anywhere along the wheel when you take the angle theta with respect to the positive x-axis and to find the magnitude of the vector or the magnitude of the velocity tangentially when you add both the, the translational velocity and the tangential velocity together you can figure that out by doing this so the total velocity in the x direction will simply be the sum of these two components right here so v sub x plus this gives you the total velocity in the x direction you square that and then this will be the total velocity in the y direction. You square that, and that's how you find the magnitude of the velocity anywhere along a rotating body like that. That's how we do that.